All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Massacre series. Credit to Simo and Hossman for inventing it. This is a special episode because it is another episode where we get to get new music. So if you would like to submit music uh, to change the music in the background of these videos, if you'd like to submit them, basically down in the comments, all you have to do is put the uh, the name of the song and, and what game it comes from. It has to be obviously from a video game because that music's not super. It's copyright, but no one really checks on it. Uh, so only video game music and you submit it again the game it's from and then the the track it is so don't just don't just say like Pikmin music for example I mean some of these games that you guys tell me have thousands of tracks I can't sort through all of them just tell me the exact song you know something mellow something nice nothing too crazy uh, but also if you like video games and I think we all like video games here because of the soundtrack uh, we have a new sponsor, actually, XYAB. XYAB is a game accessories manufacturer. They have everything you could think of. They have back covers for Game Boy SPs. They have uh, batteries for Game Boy games. They've got controllers. They've got stuff for PC. They've got all kinds of cables for your iPhone, for uh, for your PlayStation 3 controller. They've got everything you could think of. And if you click on the link in the description down below, you can get $50 off your first order. $50 off your first order just for joining. Uh, if you don't if you don't find anything you like on there, it happens, you know? Uh, worst you could do is go down there, check it out, and if you, you find anything you like, again, $50 off of your first purchase. It's pretty tough to beat. All right, we just won the coin flip. Our hands, it's like kind of solid i guess we see what our opponent's playing but it's okay i think we go barrier statue i think it's probably best because there's not much else we can do so i think we go barrier statue set to pass i think that and they scoop wonderful okay wonderful i'll definitely take that uh we have that we definitely need more packs so I'll, I'll definitely take that i'm happy our opponent scooped it up uh, our dominance right off the bat we've got this horse fish thing uh, we've got another rock grotto. I think I have like four or five copies of this at, at the stone grotto. I think I, I probably have like too many copies of that. Uh, let's go check what they were playing just for research. All right, so here's what our opponent was playing. They've got uh, they've got Dino Morphia with a little bit one one layer card. This is a pretty interesting deck, uh, but I'm happy we beat them. Also, on another side note, we are switching out some of the accessories i believe next episode which that looks kind of cool honestly uh we're switching out the accessories next episode so let me know in the comments which accessories you want me to buy i do plan on switching some of that i'm probably going to get this uh flurry of cherries i think i, I cherry blossoms i actually might get that now uh, i'm probably going to get this thing i'm probably going to get a few other things here we're going to switch them out next next episode because it's the 50th episode we're getting a new a, a brand new a bunch a bunch of new aesthetics we're getting a uh, new mate, probably. We're getting a brand new... What is it called? Uh, we're getting a brand new soundtrack. We're getting a lot of different new things in the next episode. But for now, let's open up this master pack and see what we get inside. Uh, we actually might even switch the deck next episode, too. That's still up for debate. We're still early in the season, so we've got a lot of different things that can happen. Uh, Heraldic Beast, probably not going to happen. It's not, like, terrible. It's a it's a decent rank 4 deck, honestly. A Dragoonity Monster requires a Dragoonity Tuner, so I'm probably not going to be able to summon this because it's sort of a high rarity deck. This lets a monster attack twice, but they lose 500 attack. It's not the worst card. Evil Hero, Prodigy's not that great. Uh, at least we're getting new cards. I, I will say that. We are actually getting new cards. Uh, all monsters on the field lose attack and defense equal to their level slash rank. That is actually probably good in a sealed environment, honestly. All monsters on the field lose attack equal to their... Including itself, too, so... Probably, right? All monsters on the field, yeah, including itself. I, I, I can imagine this card being pretty good in a sealed environment. Could out a lot of stuff. We got another Cladoclysm. Uh, we've got a lot of these. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the Earth one. I think the Earth one is actually one of the better ones, but we don't have it. Uh, we have three of the Fire, so we have a place that we probably have, like, two of the Wind and probably two of the Water now. Uh, Medulce Knights is the Medulce Counter Trap. Can't play that. I, honestly, I like the fact that we're getting a lot of variety. That I'm happy with. Let's see. This is actually a decent card. Oh yeah, so this this card is actually really, really cool. It's actually a good card. I remember I used to use this in... I want to say I, I used it in... In, in Sprite. I want to... Yeah, I, I played this in Sprite. Because it turns itself into a level 8. And then you can make Baron de Fleur in Sprite. Fortunately, we don't have Baron de Fleur. We actually don't have any good rank 10s. Because that would probably be pretty good. Um, 
We don't have any rank 12s either. If we did, if we had like the Geo, the Math Mech that's unaffected by everything, I would absolutely play this because this plus any level four equals, you know, the, the Math Mech. So unfortunately, this is at a level where it's not really all that great for us, but this is a very good card overall. Definitely something to keep in the back pocket uh, for a l later moment. I, it is a very good card. We just again, we, if we got a Baron of Fleur, this would one million percent be in the deck. Same thing again, Geo Math Mech, the level twelve or or, or that. I, either one of those, I would play in the deck. Otherwise, as of right now, I don't think I can actually utilize that. Okay, time to open up a Legacy ticket. Let's see what we've got in here. We're gonna skip it because it's only one. Actually, it's glowing. Might as well just open it the regular way. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Let's see what we've got under here because there are some good supers. Can't really use Steam Healer and Necro Defender. What does this do? During the Mayfish, remove this graveyard. Uh, it's not really that great. And uh, Steam Healer is cool. It used to be an ultra rare back in the day, but he's one of the not so great elemental heroes. All right, we just won the coin flip. Our hand is solid. I probably don't want to summon Goblinberg because then they can maxi us or imperm us or something i want to yeah they're playing a probably a real deck because they have a full extra deck so i don't want to uh, deal with that i'm just going to normal summon out the barrier statue i shouldn't have done that now i see what he's got I'll, I'll just set two pass so based on the fact that he didn't react instantly i probably should have summoned the goblinberg but what can you do it, it's a bit too late now our hand is was pretty good though because we have protection for the barrier statue but it, it just depends he's going to battle phase we know what this means we know what this means, so I guess we're going to lose, yep, we're going to lose our spawn trap cards. I am not going to respond with anything, I'm just going to banish these two and hope he's not playing Fire Kings. He's playing Fire Kings, we're probably pretty cooked. Uh, we're probably going to, even better, even better than Fire Kings, he's playing Vanquish Soul. This is another deck we have a lot of trouble against, and uh, yeah, I probably am not going to be winning this one. He's going to search him. I, I literally, I, I don't have an out to what's going on on the field right now. Destroy all the monsters, cars column. Okay, this this will wrap it up. I, I, I can't beat this. He's got a full hand, and I've got Goblinberg and Wish of the Black Forest. I, I just, there's no way. And then he's going to search the trap card. It, it's not happening. All right, we just lost a coin flip. Our opponent just set two and passed. Just something. Uh, oof. What do we even want to do? I have no clue what my opponent... This is the third game in a row I have Barrier Statue. And every single time, it's like I have to kind of head in that direction. It's the smartest play to make. So, I think I'm just going to make it. Yeah, I'm gonna. it's the smartest play to make. Because especially since I have Dimension Prison and Grand Horn, it, it's just kind of a good play. And if they out that, that's fine. They out it, but then they have to deal with the other stuff. So, we should go to Battle Phase. We'll save the Small World for later. I'll attack them directly. I don't know what they're playing, but they have a lot, a lot of blue eyes stuff, so I imagine it's probably blue eyes. And the good thing about playing against blue eyes is they typically don't have an out to, to barrier statue. Also, this is a very barrier statue focused episode. Yeah, they don't have an out to barrier statue, which is quite nice. They always have a 14 card extra deck. All noobs have a 14 card extra deck. It's like it's brainwashed into them. I don't know who told them to do this, but it's like every single one of them has a 14 card extra deck. So he's going to normal summon out. A rescue ace. Okay, so. <coughs> yeah, he's going to go to battle phase. And that's fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deprison this. It is kind of funny he's playing rescue ace. Because. You know, obviously it's like. My barrier statue is doing nothing. If they're playing rescue ace. But. That's assuming that they're playing rescue ace. And, and we got him off the monster. Which is good. Grand Horn of Heaven is good against Rescue Ace, I remember. If I remember. No, it's not, actually, because they've got... They have got they don't have an Inherent Summon. Uh, this guy seems to be a noob, so I'm probably going to put the Broken Line right down the middle. Uh, nefariousness is probably just the best choice here. We summon out Nefariousness. We just go to Battle Phase. We could also go into Suship, but... We'll just go attack with these two. Suship, I don't think, is really doing much, and I can prevent at least one card... Uh, by using broken line. So we'll just go to battle phase. Attack with these two. Yep. There we go. We'll attack with these two. Go to main phase two. Set this broken line face down. And uh, yeah. We'll just pass on this. Again we can go into Hida. Actually Hida wouldn't have been too bad. Right. Because we can go into Hida. Actually no I can't. Because I banished his monster anyway. So going into Hida is pointless. But 
We do have a bit broken line, so if he normal summons something right here and activates an effect, he doesn't. But if he did, we would have had something there. He's going to end phase. Let's see. Wow, that was a dramatic... Uh, I don't know why I did that. So, we drew Chow Sai. Chow Sai is pretty cool. Uh, we're going to go ahead and summon him. I, I don't see why I wouldn't. I'm going to summon him. Uh, mostly because this is probably an Ash Blossom. So, I'm just going to attack with the Chow Sai first. Just in case it is an Ash Blossom. Because obviously Ash Blossom has 18 defense. So, both of these two aren't getting over Ash Blossom. We'll just attack with the Chow Sai. And it is an Ash Blossom. I am psychic. That's great, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that was fantastic. I, I, it's almost like I've, I've done this so many times. It's like, it's like I can predict new players now. It's like if a noob exists, I know what they're going to do. We do still have Small World again. There's no like rush to use it right now. I don't really need to use it. Because it's not really doing much. But I think it's cool that we have some options. We did keep him from having any uh, Rescue Ace cards in Graveyard, so his Rescue Ace, I believe, Turbulence can't really be summoned because he doesn't have any Rescue Ace cards in the Graveyard and he doesn't have any on the field, so he can't activate them to do anything, which is also nice. So this guy, I don't know, maybe his, his build's a little bricky. I don't know what the, what the deal is here, but he definitely is not... He's not succeeding right now. Whatever he's doing is right. Yeah, it's over. It's kind of crazy. If he actually is playing Rescue Ace, it's quite embarrassing that he lost a Fire Barrier statue. He's playing Rescue Ace, but we've got two Legacy tickets and this chick right here who has terrible stats. Okay, this is what our opponent's playing. They were indeed playing Rescue Ace with Snake Eyes, and it's 100% a fire deck. I don't know what their hand looked like. Unfortunately, you can't watch the duel bag and see what your opponent was playing, but I can't imagine a combination of cards that did not do anything against us like like what did he have he had to have like this 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 and then that one rescue like that had to be his hand otherwise like otherwise i don't even know what he had in his hand all right let's do it master pack here we go again i don't even care if it doesn't glow i'd actually at this point kind of prefer that it doesn't glow uh because i'm i i want that tangy monster at hara i want i don't even know what this does if you want controls monster special this card from your hand Becomes level 4. It's not bad, right? It's a free level 4 special summon, but your opponent has to control a monster. Ah, that's whatever. Um, let's see. We've got a, another Bujin card. We have a lot of Bujins. We seriously have a lot. And I mean a lot of Bujins. Like, I don't I don't really know how to play Bujins. I don't even know what they do. The only, but the thing is, we're missing the extra deck. That's our main issue. But if we get enough Bujins and they don't lock you into anything and it's just a rank 4 engine, we might have to convert over to Bujins because I, I keep pulling them. I really do. Uh, another Indigo Eclipse. That's pretty cool. Uh, Cupid Volley. This card is like Card Trooper, but like slightly less good, I'd say. It's like a slightly less good Card Trooper. That's that's probably what I would call that, but it's a bit decent for a Chaos deck. Another Fabled Monster, Vylon historically useless and armored b insect support sort of but it, it target one face of monster burn controls have that attack this isn't bad but like I, I i let's be honest we have better cards than this we don't need to do this anymore uh yeah bujin is, a, is is an interesting thought let me go open these legacy tickets and we'll take a look at the bujins all right here are our legacy tickets just click skip and we'll see what we got still uh shining silver storm shining silver force this is so incredibly specific. I will never be able to use that. Uh, Pinch Hopper is actually... Uh, s yeah, when this card is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon an insect monster. This card is decent for insect support. It does miss timing, though, if you read it carefully. Uh, so if something else happens, if it's destroyed and then something else happens, it can miss timing. So this card is kind of iffy, but even so, we don't really use that. Cocoon Rebirth, we're not going to play that. Revoke Fusion, two back-to-back -back Jaden cards. This is like a fusion deployment, but like, <clears throat> this is like incredibly, like a super slow version of fusion deployment. Like, the, like outrageously, just, this card is just completely power crept. There's absolutely no reason to ever play it. All right, we're in the deck builder. Uh, somebody told me to give this card a try. I'm going to do it. Um, again, if you guys want me to get 
tell if you guys want me to try certain cards out tell me what to put in but also tell me what to take out because a lot of people will be like play this but they don't tell and then i'm like what do i take out they're like i don't know yeah this person actually told me what to take out and what to put in so i'll try it uh graveyard of the giant organism they told me to take out legacy of the duelist i'll give it a try why not there have been situations where that card has been uh bricky and to some degree even has hindered us so i am going to try the graveyard of an uh super or ancient organism i'm, I'm going to try this card out for um one time and then look, let's look at bujin cards because we keep pulling bujins it feels like we pull like one every episode but i'm going to check and it's gonna be like we have three never mind we actually have like kind of a significant part of a boot i didn't realize how big this archetype was wow this is a lot of cards actually so we probably don't have the good ones but we have uh our suda uh whatever this is uh we've got this one we've got two copies of this yamato which we also have so we have one two three hair yeah i've never ever played bujins i just wasn't uh playing the game at that time but it seems like we have probably like say 40 50 percent of the main deck cards that exist out there like i'm not saying that you would play these or that these are the good ones but we are we probably have like 40 50 percent of them and we don't have mul we have multiples of some cards uh, we're missing, like I've said before, the entire extra deck, which is all URs. Just a, like to have all URs in your archetype, and for your archetype to just be decent is. This is maybe a tier four archetype, and to have four URs, every one of your monsters from the extra deck is a UR. That's that's outrageous. Let's be honest. I guess you guys could let me know. Let me know if this is, if we have enough to play here. I don't, I don't believe that we do, but this is basically, from what I understand, is a rank 4 archetype. I don't know if these are, like, generic or not. Um, yeah, whether they like, lock you into things or they don't. I remember this card being good. This one lets you mill 5 cards. Uh, I used to use this in Light Sworns. It lets you mill 5 cards. Uh, you can use 2 wolves and then mill 5 cards. Pretty good. And then there's also, I've also used Tsukiyomi. I've also used Amaterasu. I've used all, like, these 3 cards... I've never used uh, Susano, uh, but I have used Amaterasu, and this card's pretty good too because you can uh, get one of your banished monsters back. This one is pretty good. Uh, yeah, they're all good cards. Like these extra deck cards are like decent cards, especially like this. But like most of them have been power corrupt uh, to a large degree. Uh, but I guess if we can ever uh, test this out, we might be able to play this actually. All right, we just lost a coin flip. Our opponent has a bunch of labyrinth stuff. Uh, you hope they're not playing Labyrinth. Their deck seems to be... Okay, Bistial Lubelion is... Man, we didn't go first. Bistial Lubelion is a card that you definitely want to see when you draw a Necro Valley, but not when you're going second. So we're going to search Magnemut. Uh, we'll see if he banishes his own monster. If he doesn't, if he just passes for some reason, I can just Necro Valley. And none of that's going to be possible. Uh, we do have some Confliction here. Okay, good. We do have some confliction here. We have back to the front, and then we have Necro Valley, which is a little rough, but whatever, 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 whatever. It doesn't even matter. So first things first, Necro Valley. We drop that straight onto the ground. Uh, we drop that right onto the field. We'll see if they can are smart enough to Bestial Magnumut. Now they should. They're not. Okay, they should have Bestial Magnumut. Now we have Kashtir Ogre, so we can keep them off of their next summon for the next few turns. And they're going to scoop it up. Wow, this has been like... It, it's like we just scare these people now. This is great. Yeah, they, that was his own fault. He should have chained... I, you know what's funny? I don't even know... The thi I don't know if he was smart enough to actually be s scared of the Necro Valley. I think he was actually just scared of the Kashtira. And he was afraid of us playing Kashtira. I actually think that's what he was afraid of. Which is nice. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take the, the scare the scare tactics. Alright, so we've got... Let's see, what do we got here? We've got three Legacy Tickets Solid. Okay, this is what our opponent was playing. They were playing Thunder Dragons. Ah, you know, I, I don't feel that bad. It's Thunder Dragons. Like, Thunder Dragons is kind of like a mid-range deck. It's They've got a pretty cool build, too. They've got uh, this in Royal Rare. They've got this in Royal Rare. And then they've got a pretty decent build. This is the, the Bestial Thunder Dragon build. It looks like a fun build to me. Uh, would we? I don't know if we would have beaten them. We had a pretty good lock there because we had... Yeah, we had the Kashtira Ogre and stuff like that. So we had a pretty good situation going for ourselves i think we actually probably would have beat that because we could keep banish their draw face down so i think it might have been actually all right this is the first time in my life i am hoping it doesn't glow uh unless it's a zeus then we want it to glow or a baron but other than that we don't want it to glow we actually want the 10 level one we want there's a lot of cards that we want i'm not even going to say them out loud we, we want a lot of stuff 
Uh, I don't think I can really use this. Send one spell card, special summon one star seraph. Don't have enough. Can't really do anything with that. Uh, that's a, a ritual spell. Another copy of that. Dark Lords can't. I mean, we have some Dark Lords, especially two Dark Lords from your graveyard defense position. Same as one face upon your opponent controls. Uh, this takes a lot of setup. Uh, you can technically put a, monster, a Dark Lord monster onto your opponent's board uh, with the Dark Lord. I forget her name, but she has like an angel wing. Uh, but that's a little difficult to set up. Advanced Crystal Beast, not going to happen. Monster Assortment. Okay, so this this card actually is... If it was a spell card, I would actually like maybe play this in our normal monster deck. But this card is so slow. Like, it really is slow. I don't think this is playable. It, it's a cool looking card too. I like the art, right? It's got Mongo Ryu Ran, and then it's got regular Ryu Ran. And your opponent's supposed to choose one or the other. It has this zombie, but it's also got this zombie. Like, I actually like the artwork a lot. There's a lot of depth to this artwork. I think it's actually really cool. Uh, but... Despite the awesome artwork and all of the Easter eggs in it, I actually think this card is just too slow to actually play. If it was a spell card, sure, we probably could figure it out. This would be a really cool card to play in blue eyes, like just randomly, just something I thought of. Because then you could reveal like a blue eyes and then you can reveal like an alternative and your opponent has to pick one. Uh, and then the other one gets shuffled into that. Like, it wouldn't be like a bad support card, but I cannot imagine playing this as a trap card. It is so slow. Uh, next, we've got Legendary Fisherman number two. Uh, we just don't have Umi's, Legendary Oceans, Seath Stealths. We don't have everything involved with that, so I don't think we can actually get away with playing that. And then for the super rare or better... Oh, oh, oh my god! <coughs> wow. Wow. Sometimes you just don't expect that. Wow. Oh my god, I'm about to tear up. Oh my god. All this work we put in, we finally get some. Jesus. Wow. I didn't expect that. Here I was thinking some throwaway super air. We get the Michael Jordan of board wipes. We get like the best. I mean, maybe evenly match. Because our battle phase doesn't matter. Maybe evenly match in our deck. But in most decks, it's Lightning Storm. Now, that is quite something. That is like, wow. I'm in tears. Okay, so now we've got our legacy ticket. It's not going to top what we just pulled. It's physically, but we're not going to top what we just pulled. Uh, I'm going to go to skip and go directly here. Millennium Shield. You know what? We might have topped what we just pulled. Uh, I like Millennium Shield. This is the alternate art. I don't know why, but they... Which art come, gets into the game and which one doesn't? I don't know why they choose which arts come in and don't. Uh, but this is not the McDonald's promo rare that I'm used to seeing. Uh, but it's a cool, a cool card. We're never going to use it, but it's cool. Inferno Tempest. I mean... When you rely on your opponent to do something in order to do something else, it usually doesn't work out, so that's a little bit too slow. Uh, this is a really old card that isn't good. Uh, drill Bug. Okay, so for a second there, I, I thought this was a way to uh, successfully use the effect of Parasite Parasite, which if you don't know, that's the card that um, Weevil snuck into Joey's deck before they dueled. I thought this was a way to actually put it on top of your opponent's deck to guarantee that your opponent... Uh, drew it and then infected their deck. I thought that's what this was. It's actually not. Uh, what this is, is actually um, a way for you to search it to yourself. So you attack with it. You attack with this drill bug, inflict battle damage, put your parasite parasite on top of your deck, and then you basically can draw it next turn and then set it, but then your opponent knows that that's coming. So it, it, it's really dumb. This is really bad support. All right, next is this Blackwing with the weird big face. Um... Yeah, if it's destroyed, set in the graveyard, reduce the next damage you take to zero. If, if this was episode one, this is like, this is the most episode one card I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, Regulus. Not, not Therion King Regulus, that would be crazy. No, this is just regular old Regulus, not Therion King. Alright, this card's actually not bad. It recurs a field spell. Actually, never mind. It returns it to the deck. Who needs that? This is just a dumb card. Uh, it's got decent stats, but it's it's just a dumb card. All right, so we're in the deck builder. Obviously, we're gonna grab Lightning Storm. I think it's 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 time we cut Lightning Vortex. Now, on a positive note with Lightning Vortex, now obviously Lightning Storm for this particular deck is just better because it has no costs. It does suck that we can't control face up cards to use it, so sometimes it will be a dead card. Uh, but Lightning Storm, the problem with it is that it was a very uh, yeah Lightning Storm was very reliant on you know discarding a card and a lot of time we don't have a huge like um like 
advantage engine so it was a little bit dead sometimes so we'll save that obviously this goes inside the deck that's probably one of the best pulls we've ever had now on a positive note uh, we do have our other decks, which I, I might be playing this next uh, next um, episode, which we have our going second, not this deck, but we have our going second, maybe this one right here, our going second deck, which is this deck. We've got our Cosmo going second deck. I've pulled so many more Cosmos, and the good thing about this is we have now Lightning Vortex Special Hurricane plus this, plus we have multiple copies. <laughs> we have three copies of Swords of Concealing Light. We also have the Branded Regain. Like, we have a lot of good going second cards. So, it might be a situation where you might actually start going second soon. I wish that we pulled more things like Tiamaton. Like, we've only ever pulled one of this. We never pulled the playset. But there's a lot of good Chaos cards that we've been pulling. I think we pulled Thunder Dragon Duo, if I remember correctly. Uh, but... Yeah, a lot of uh, interesting stuff. Again, Lightning Storm is, a, is, a, is just an absolutely crazy pull. Uh, plus, I just look down here. Yeah, we've got more of this. Uh, we, we At the time of recording this, how many of these did we have? One. Now we have three of these. So that bumps it up. I really have to kind of work on this deck because I think that this is actually a fairly viable deck now because we have a lot more uh, variety and versatility with this deck. Plus, I pulled more Cosmo stuff too. Let me, let me go to related cards here. Let's click on this. And then I'll um, click on related cards. Yeah, look at all these Cosmos we pulled. So we have uh, three of this. We have uh, two of, of the uh, Dark, uh, Wicked Witch now. Uh, Delta Shuttle I put in. We have the Landwalker. We've got four copies of Forerunner, which is one of the better low rarity ones. It's 28. Just spe special summons himself out at 28. We unfortunately don't have something something like a Cosmo Town and or a Cosmojo. Or even like Slip Rider. This is a very low rarity deck. This We're really missing very little here. What is it, like 1 UR? And that's it? Like, we're pretty close as long as we just keep pulling some of these low rarity cards. <coughs> but I'm going to go ahead and save this and uh, get back to our battle. I think this deck, next, next episode I might try to play this. Because there's a lot of exciting things for us to do here. Um, this deck, I don't know if it can make the... Uh, the Nchuria Beast either. I mean, that's this has been a tough situation with the Nchuria Beast. But I think this is a really awesome deck. So we might play this next. Like I said, plus we have like Peaceful Planet Calarium, which is cool. Because we can just like, it's a plus one. And then and then it searches a tuner. And if we destroy the tuner, we get stuff back. It's really cool. So we'll, we'll try. All right. We just lost a coin flip. But look what we have here. We have Lightning Storm. So we don't really care that we lost the coin flip. Because we have Lightning Storm. I can't believe I'm looking at it. Uh, we'll see what our opponent's able to do. Obviously, we hope that... Oh my God. Ah, but we have Lightning Storm. We have Lightning Storm, though, so we'll see. Now, the thing is, let's be honest, Labyrinth is a lot better at playing against Lightning Storm than other trap decks because all of the graveyard effects float. So, that is a little bit, you know, that's a little bit of a, of a problem there, especially since he's got, like, transaction rollback and he just set the uh, big welcome Labyrinth, so... Lightning Storm may actually help them, but if we can Lightning Storm and then drop Necro Valley onto that board before our opponent can figure out what's going on, I think we might actually be onto something here. Alright, they're going to activate Ku Clock, which I'm... I thought most people cut this, actually. That sucks for us. So he's going to bounce one. It's very possible he could actually destroy our Lightning Storm. I don't really want to lose anything in our hand. Fiendish Chain or Forbidden Chalice would be the cards that I don't care about losing. Um, so hopefully it's Fiendish Chain or Forbidden Chalice. Of course, we're playing against a Labyrinth player. So some things, sometimes things don't work out. He's going to summon that back. Oh my god damn, I didn't want to lose that at all. I, actually, I really did not want to lose that. Alright, he's going to go to the end phase. This is a tough one. I don't even know. Man, I don't have any monsters. I'm kind of screwed here. So we either get rid of this or this. I think we go for the back row because it's still, you know, this deck. So I think we go for the back row. We are going to Lightning Storm. Just because most of these effects are turned off anyway. Man. Man. All right. I mean, I kind of want to get rid of this, but then I have to deal with... Uh, this is probably like a Welcome Labyrinth or a big Welcome Labyrinth or one of the Labyrinths. So we'll go with Lightning Storm. Uh, I think we'll go with 
Well, actually, he can protect it with Big Welcome Labyrinth anyway, so we'll just do Spawn Trap Crates, because he can just bounce it to his hand or something. So we'll just go uh, Lightning Storm, pick the Spawn Trap cards. It also would have been decent to pick the monsters. He might think, oh, but I have Transaction. He just chained it for no, re no reason whatsoever. I was planning on... Uh, that really sucks. I was planning on dropping Necro Valley shortly after, because obviously these two cards don't work. These these cards don't work together because you can't drop lightning. You can't drop Necro Valley then Lightning Storm because light, Lightning Storm requires nothing to be on the field. Uh, he's gonna drop her. And he's gonna bounce that. So now Lightning Storm, that's gonna get popped. Okay. Now he can pop another card, which sucks for us. I can negate this actually because then it'll protect us. I mean, I guess we we do that. We'll negate it. Uh, we'll negate that right now. He's gonna activate the stove to set a card from deck okay and we are going to successfully negate him eventually he's going to set something here yeah like i said lightning storm like it seems like it's good against labyrinth but it's just like they, they they're so it's such a it, it's it's good that we have it. it's better that we have it than that we don't but like the deck is so like i still have not been able to even activate Necro Valley. Yeah, that's another annoying thing. Because if we had gone first, we could have activated that. And then we could have turned all this off. But he's already done like four graveyard effects without us even getting here yet. Yeah, but he's going to activate this. So he can activate the same turn. And then he's going to chain that to bounce one of the monsters on the field. Or maybe even a card on the field. He's going to bounce the Necro Valley. Yeah, this is, this is an unfortunate situation. He kind of uh, got lucky here. So we're going to activate Necro Valley back out. He does have the trap card to chain immediately. And then he can set another trap card with Labyrinth. And then it's it, this is, this is going to be a never-ending thing. <coughs> right, he's going to set Eradicator. Eradicator is... Kind of annoying, and he's going to summon the Arius to the field. So we'll just set two and pass. I don't believe that we can win this one, but I mean, Labyrinth is one of those decks. I don't, I don't think we've ever beaten it unless the opponent was a complete moron. And this, this person's got like, uh, they've got the World Championship qualifier sleeves, so I, I doubt that they are that stupid i could solemn judgment this but then i just lose so if i solemn judgment this i protect necro valley and i so i how much is necro valley how valuable is it against this matchup and honestly i think it's pretty valuable and then i just fiendish chain the other card yeah so we do that and then we uh put chaining on because as fast as possible, I want to negate this card's effects. Because then I lose if I don't. So we'll put Chaining on. Yes, we want to activate Fiendish Chain. And we target this now, Lady Labyrinth. Uh, before he puts down uh, more things. Before he sets a card. Because once he sets something, this card will be unaffected. Not unaffected. This card can't be targeted. So we have to do this now. So this card can attack. This card cannot attack. He's not... He doesn't have enough damage on board to beat us right now. So that's good. So if we draw any kind of a decent monster, we're in good shape. But we'll see what we draw here. If we draw a decent monster, we just need to draw a decent monster. That's not good enough. That is not good enough. Yeah, unfortunately, that's just not good enough. Nothing we could do there. It, it was a lot closer than it's been in the past, but that 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 um, it's the labyrinth. It's it's the labyrinth. All right. Uh, we just won the coin flip. Our hands are looking pretty solid. We've got Endymion. We've got Witch of the Black Forest, Small World. I don't think I'm going to use the Small World. Because uh, I don't believe I need to. I mean, I can go into one to extend it. But I don't think I need to, honestly. I, I'm probably going to shuffle back the Small World anyway. Alright, so we special summon out Nahata here. Again, we needed Hara. And Hara would really change the game for us. And then we summon out the Endymion. Ooh, I just remembered something. So, uh, really random. Because my, my turn's not going to take that long. Uh, if you check the related cards, Crowley actually can change him. He can declare an attribute and change himself uh, to whatever he wants. So he can actually change himself to an Earth monster. So if I draw, if I pull at horror from the pack, 
or any level 1 earth monster, this can change itself to an earth, and then we can use a level 1 tuner plus... <coughs> we can use a level 1 earth tuner plus Crowley uh, that we can change the attribute on to summon out Naturia Beast. Perfect, actually. That's amazing. Alright, so right now we're going to activate the Endymion. Activate its own effect, target itself to attach Artemis, which we couldn't actually search Crowley with. Uh, so we'll activate the Artemis Moon Maiden. We'll search out for versatility. I guess we'll search Sora for next turn with Witch of the Black Forest. And now we'll activate Endymion to destroy our Artemis. And then we'll draw Shadol Dragon. I probably will just put back that shit all dragon i don't think i need it i mean i yeah i don't think i need this shit all dragon i mean i could use shit all dragon to make an exceed monster but I, I i'd rather keep the small world for some just in case you know just in case i want to change the game plan i think we just go time thief here for sure i think we just go time thief and we set judgment and we have a decent board i wouldn't say it's like incredible but i mean judgment plus time thief Depending on what we get off the top of their deck, Judgment, Time Thief, Small World Follow-Up with Zora, not too bad. Alright, so, uh, Standby Phase, let's go Time Thief, see what we get. Always hoping for a trap or a spell, you know, something that's not a monster, being that we have monsters underneath it, so it'd be pointless. He's got a Chain Reload. It's kind of interesting, it's a random chain. He's gonna Chain Reload to our Time Thief. I don't even know what that really accomplishes, but... He's gonna chain another reload. Alright, maybe he's playing Exodia and he's trying to mix stuff up. That's fine with me, he can reload all he wants. I mean, for me, I mean, the way I see it, reload is just a minus one anyway. I don't really care. He's gonna shuffle in four and then... Oh, we're gonna trap card anyway. We've got a Torrential Tribute. Pretty good card. I wish I could keep it. He's going to normal summon out Gemini Soldier. That's fine. I'm absolutely never going to judge him at that card. He can, uh, we could do that. He, I hope he summons another Gemini monster. We do have to get rid of this. And now he's going to just enter battle. We have to get rid of this card because... And he's attacking us. But he's a Gemini. He doesn't have any of these effects. So I don't, I don't know what the purpose here is. Alright, he's going to go to end phase. Good enough. Good enough for me. Uh, yeah, good enough. We're going to go Forbidden Chalice, alright. Not the worst, not the best. Let's activate Time Thief. Forbidden Chalice might be the damage we need to win here. We get a spell. I double summon another card I'd love to keep. Another card I would love to keep. We're going to activate Time Thief, why not? Uh, he's got nothing on board, so I don't feel too scared. Here, double summon it is. And that's it. And we're going to draw Tin Goldfish. Alright, so... I think I'm going to go for the big play. I'm going to go Tin Goldfish, Activate Effect, Special Summon out Zora, in Attack Mode, I'm going to Activate Zora, Attach onto itself, and then we'll Attach Iowas, that'll make it 23 more, and then we're going to Activate this Effect, to Special Summon out the, the uh, Witch of the Black Forest, Summons in defense, unfortunately. How much damage do we have on board? Not including... Well, attack... But this, this is the attack total, right? Yeah, okay, so... We don't have enough. 57. Actually, we have exactly enough. We have exactly enough. But, let's take the easy way out of life. Uh, we'll go... What does he have in graveyard? Is that a fire? No, it's a wind. Okay, I was gonna say, we can, let's do some things, but... Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do some stuff here so i think we'll just exceed summon again all right so we'll just use these two which the black forest plus uh the other monster this will trigger the witch of the black forest since even though it was negated it doesn't matter because it's a graveyard effect and then we can search out mr ron ryu why not let's search out ron ryu we could special summon him out in attack mode and then we'll go, we'll, we'll just special summon out again, just because, why not? Might as well get some uh, dailies done. Alright, let's go to battle phase. We've got enough to win here. No need to waste any more of anybody's precious time. Let's just win the duel here. So we'll just attack directly. I don't really know what our, it's probably a bot. I don't I don't know. 
That was some. It's not a bad deck, honestly. From what I saw, from what I got at the top of his deck, he didn't even have cards that were that bad. But he was just kind of dumb. Probably a bot. All right, so we got that one. Pretty easy win. I don't even really know what's going on. This is a problem with gold. There's a lot of bots. We ranked up again. Easy rank up. I should I should just play the chaos deck if the game's going to be this easy. Uh, we've got one legacy ticket, Dark Witch, right? Dark Witch, uh, and some free gems. All right, let's look in our opponent's deck. Uh, they're playing a Gemini deck, okay, with Chemo Critters and Reload and Torrential Tribute and Compulsory Evacuation Device. This is a pretty crappy deck, but uh, mostly because it's Gemini's. But honestly, though, some of these cards are good. Like, I take some of these cards. Like, I would take Double Summon. I would take Torrential Tribute. I would, I would definitely take some of these cards. All right, let's see what we've got in this Master Pack here. Again, I'm not even looking for a Glow. I'm just looking for a few... Simple cards. Nemesis Corridor. Uh, Gaga -ga Clerk. Okay. If you control a Gaga -ga -ga monster, special summon this. Free special summon. Not bad. Uh, Super Quantum card we already have. Naturia Eggplant. When this card is sent from field to graveyard, select one Naturia monster from a graveyard. Add it to your hand. Not a bad card, honestly. Uh, we already have this card. No no point to have it again. It is a tuner. Um, Ty Dangle Angel. Not really usable for us. Another Dragon, but this one's stats aren't that great. So, probably not going to use that. Ancient Gear Factory is not a great card. And King's Consonance. This card's honestly not even that horrific. Um, it can let you synchro summon, but it requires a lot of setup. Uh, it requires... Yeah, it requires your opponent to declare an attack. Then you get to banish a tuner and non-tuners and, and synchro summon. Which is like... It's a little too slow, honestly. Um... But it's not like terrible. It just requires you to already have all of the stuff in the graveyard. And if you're not, you don't have it, then it's kind of dead. All right, let's open the singular legacy ticket. See what we've got here. No glow. We'll just skip. And we've got Petite Moth. Okay, that's pretty cool. And uh, this field. When a fusion monster is destroyed by card effects into the graveyard, its owner targets one fusion material. Special summon that target. Not, not a terrible card, honestly, but there's just better versions of this card, like... The uh, field spell for Despia, for example, is just better. Fusion recovery plan. Like, there's just better cards than this card at this point. All right, we just won the coin flip. Uh, Tin Goldfish Magistus, not bad. Plus, we have Bistial, which we can set up for the Bistial, actually, by using the Magistus. I had to go Tin Goldfish because, obviously, I don't really have a choice there. Uh, so, we'll use the Endymion right now. Magic uh, late. Uh, so he saved us a little bit here. Uh, we're going to activate target the Magistus. Obviously, target itself. Do this again. Pretty cool combo there. Let's activate <clears throat> Artemis. Hopefully get something useful. Why not Zora for versatility? Because we do have the Re Rochka. And then we'll activate Endymion. Most of the time we end up shuffling back to Zora anyway. But we pop and then we draw an Ari Fire. I can't really use that right now anyway. I think we actually put back... <laughs> the Zora because we can uh yeah Rochka then an Ari Fire so that's good enough so we'll just throw that back into the deck and I think now we just go into Time Thief I, I think we have to do this even though we're going to make him draw one we do go into the Time Thief and we'll drop Time Thief yes he's drawing but I mean I'd rather have a Time Thief than just two monsters on board so we'll do that and we'll set this and then we have uh, Bestial Magnemot during our opponent's turn also. We can banish our own Artemis, or depending on what deck he's playing, we can banish something of his if it if it becomes useful. Uh, they're going to activate that. I didn't even see what it was. It was the Pearly in the, I'm guessing we're in the draw phase. So Pearly's definitely beatable, but it just depends on what happens next. And then he's going to use this if I had an Imperm. Definitely would, but I can't really right now. Um, we're not in standby phase, right? We're in the draw phase, so not yet. Nothing to really do here yet. And they're going to... Each player... Yeah, we're, we're, we're good with that. So we're going to special summon a, another pearly card. He's going to discard evenly matched, which he didn't use, I guess. I mean, yeah, it'd be kind of pointless against us. I mean, look at our board. He's going to summon regular Pearly out. Instead of the, the, the Pirelli with L, an extra LY at the end. 
He's gonna excavate three again. It's not that I can really do much about this. He's gonna excavate three. Pretty good excavations. He hit the card he needed. He's gonna add the spell, the pretty memory. <coughs> now we're officially in standby phase. Let's activate Time Thief's effect. Hopefully, get a trap card. He did get some monsters out of his deck. If we get a trap, that'd be nice. We got a spell, so we get to draw. Triple Tactics, I mean, that kind of makes me weary of activating it myself. He's going to activate his pretty member of uh, my friend Pearly. Reveal three, or we pick one randomly. So he's going to use that. And nothing I can do. Bestial Magnum might, might actually come up because they do have lights and darks. So it might actually come up depending on the situation here. But and we're, we're, we're going to have to see. So we're going to add one randomly. Doesn't matter which one, we don't see it anyway. Now he's going to target that. Cool. Can't do anything. Not yet. It, it is nice to see that we do have enough interruptions where we can actually like have a conversation where we possibly might win against decks like this. So, I will say that has been quite nice. So he's going to summon out the beauty. He's going to send the pearl, Pearly to the graveyard to send the our card in the back row to the graveyard. Um, there's nothing I can really do, right? Target one, once per turn, you can target one effect monster. I mean, that's a separate effect. But yeah, he's going to quick effect, and then he's going to attach it. I mean, there's nothing I can really do about that. He targeted this. I can't, like I said, I can't really do anything about that. He's going to take my monster, or my, my trap card, and put it under a, his own monster. It does suck that we lost that because I would have loved to have banished his monster, obviously, but nothing I can really do there. It's going to activate Happy Memory. The lucky bastard. He did mill that, right? Or no, he, he yeah, no, he, he milled it with my friend Pearly. Leave from deck. I could have sworn he used that effect already, but... I guess it's, oh yeah, this effect's not once per turn. The excavation effect's not once per turn. And he's actually neither effect is once per turn. Good to know. He's going to go into plump. And he's going to attach to that. And he's going to target two in graveyard. Nothing we can really do there. He does have this quick effect uh, negate. And he's going to special summon one from deck again. This guy drew a pretty like, crazy hand. Yeah, he drew a pretty crazy hand. You can, up to thrice per turn, activate a pearly quick effect. You can attach that card on the field's material. Banish one monster on the field until the end phase. I'm going to go ahead and chain Time Thief now because he can banish our monster, non-targeting. So, might as well chain now to hopefully draw a card. And then, of course, like I said, he has the, uh, the negate on this beauty so he can negate my monster. Yeah, this one's looking, this one's looking a little rough, I'm not going to lie. This one's looking a little tough. This is like the, uh, the, the other game, the, not Labyrinth, whatever it was called. Um, yeah, Labyrinth, actually, yeah, that's exactly what it's called. Uh, the Labyrinth game. Now, what sucks is if this is like a Triple Tactics Talents or something, and I activated that for no reason, that would really suck. Are they gonna go to Battle Phase? Okay, good enough. I am actually going to use the Bestial Magnum right now. Uh, to block this attack, I'll banish the pearly out of his graveyard, and I'll special summon it out. So I'll just summon that out right here, and then we'll activate the effect of Bestial Magnuma to search, and that will obviously cancel his attack, and we'll get to search Tiamaton in the end phase, hopefully. So Time Thief's going to return. Uh, we'll summon it right here so that we can possibly set a card, and then pop this column. So we'll add Tiamaton. He didn't seem to do any of the trap stuff, which is good. He does have the quick effect to uh, negate an effect, which is annoying, but it's not too bad for us. So we're going to go Redoer. Hopefully he can negate this. No, he does not. We've got an Ash Blossom. Not really all that useful. And then he's going to stand by phase, draw a card. Not much I can do about that. And then he's going to draw a card again. This is this is the rough part right here when they get to draw a bunch. Uh, so we're gonna normal summon Rochka. We're gonna activate the effect of Rochka, allowing us to draw a card. And 
and uh, they're going to gain some more life points. Uh, they're going to add Grave of the Supergiant Organism. Not really obviously useful against their deck. They're going to max C. Max C is whack as hell. Because obviously they, they're playing a deck, a meta deck, and I can't do anything. Uh, because now if I special summon, I'm just giving them cards that will probably beat us. So I think we just go to battle phase. Uh, yeah, we just go to battle phase and hopefully attack over stuff. Because I, I, I it, it does suck that they had that. So we'll just start attacking his monsters. So we'll get over the uh, the fat boy. And then we'll attack the pretty one. So yep, they're going to target three, add it to their hand. I would have loved to pop it, but again, it's like the Iron Dragon, if I activate it, then you get to draw, and then you get to draw random cards. Now we have to deal with this all over again next turn, which is really annoying. So we'll attack over the, the other one, the Beauty. He can activate, uh, it's not point for him to do it, but now we attack with the Fairy Tail. <coughs> and I guess we just main phase, we'll just set this here. Uh, just so we have three cards in a column, and then we'll just end our turn. And then Iron Dragon is live for two different columns, if we are able to use it. Alright, so standby phase, we activate Time Thief Redoer. Be able to grab a card back. It's another another Ash Blossom. It's not a spell card. With all the spells in their decks, it has to be an Ash Blossom. Okay, so they're going to activate Stray, Stray Pearly Street. Not much we can do there. So... Delicious memory, all this stuff's going to resolve. Again, there's not much I can really do about this. This guy's mad lucky. This hard monster can't be destroyed by battle. And now he has the Tiamaton. He's playing quite well into the appropriate columns. We want him to summon here and here, but he seems to be summoning here. Again, this is not the, the board that I wanted to end on, but the damn Max C just killed everything. Because if I would have special summoned, he could have drawn drawn a Nibiru, and you know this this goes. And we didn't have enough to like game him yet, because we had we had the attacks that we had on board, and then he gained life points, and then we would have needed we would have summoned an Ari Fire and Iron Dragon, and that wouldn't have been enough to to game him. Unfortunately, it would not have been enough to game him. It's gonna go into Plump. Can attach materials. Alright, so to use Plump to banish our Time Thief. Make both of us gain even more life points. <coughs> now he's going to target the Pretty Memory. I Nothing I can do here. He just takes it as material. Now he's going to attach some more material. This is easily one of the most annoying duels I think we've ever been a part of. Like, it, it's annoying enough to have to play against, like, Pearly, which is a decent deck. But it, what makes it more annoying is that when you just sit here like a hostage, watching him do the same move over and over and over, it's like madness. Just watching this over and over, and every effect is thrice per turn or not once per turn. It's just, just like, it's just maddening. Watching the same cards with the same stupid cat activate over and over and over again. Um... If this card battles before damage calculation, send it to the graveyard. I think if I activate this, he could just have a replay, so I'm just going to allow myself to take the damage. Uh, my monster can't be destroyed by battle. How many attacks does this sucker have? Does he have attacks on monsters only? Yeah, I don't know how many attacks he's got. And again, it's just like every card is every card is like five paragraphs long. Okay, uh, this card can attack... Up to the number, up to the number of pearly happy memories attached to a plus one. All right, so I think I'm just gonna send the Roachka to the graveyard now, and that will actually save us, because he now he can't attack, because he already attacked once, so he can't attack directly. So that Roachka actually uh, prevented us from taking additional damage that we didn't need to, which is cool. Uh, but now we get all of our monsters back. But this guy gets like three million other things. He's gonna go into, uh, you know, attach more materials. We're gonna get Time Thief back. Put Time Thief right here. And then we'll put Bestial Magnemite right here. If we draw a spell card, we can easily go into something useful. Oh, man, of course. Uh, what do I do now? What do I do now? Okay, so he's, he might actually help us here a little bit. He's going to attach those two. How do we out? Stupid plump. 
And then the drawing, too. He's going to draw a bunch right now, too. How do we out this? We got a trap card. That can out it. Right? That can out it. Uh, so he's going to activate standby phase draw. I'm actually going to chain the Time Thief Redoer now to put this on top of his deck. Uh, this does not target, so it doesn't matter. Street doesn't protect it, but Street is only that turn anyway. So we're going to activate this. He can do whatever he wants, but now we're going to be able to move all his monsters out of the way. He's going to target a Pearly and move it and then change into the bigger Pearly, which this is this is actually whack as hell because he's going to go into the one that's unaffected by everything. And then I think we just, yeah, I, just, I, I don't have an out to this. I don't have an out to this. So I'm going to detach. Yeah, I don't have an out to this card. I, I straight up do not have an out to this. I, I don't have anything in my entire deck that can out a Pearly Noir. Except for Crusader Avermax. So hopefully this moron lets us get to a Crusader Avermax. I think I'm just going to put the street back. It's probably be the smartest thing to put. But I mean, this guy... I'm, uh, I'm going to try to get to Crusader Avermax. And if I can get to it, I can get to it. So I'm going to put the street back. And if I can get to Crusader Avermax, I can get to Crusader Avermax. I guess we'll have to see. Uh, now we'll just hope for the best. He's going to draw a card in the standby phase. Nothing I can do. Like I said, this, this sucks, but it, this is outrageous. This is just outrageous. The amount of, of like... I know, obviously, this deck is, like... I think the, the craziest part about it is this isn't even, like, a Tier 1 deck or anything. Like, it's like a Tier 3... Like, a Tier 2, Tier 3 deck right now. I'm going to summon shit all Dragon. Hopefully, our opponent doesn't suspect anything, but they always draw Max C. So, yep, there it is. How did I know? Uh, this We have no choice but to play into the Max C. We're going to activate Iron Dragon now. We didn't have a choice. We have to do this now. Yep, they're going to activate that. Three pearly monsters. Shuffle them into the deck. <coughs> That's fine with me. So we're going to activate Tiamaton. This guy's not a dumb guy either. That's what's kind of annoying because he played against it quite well. So we're going to summon that out. Maxi is... Obviously nothing's going to happen with Maxi. We'll summon the Inari Fire. Again, if he lets us get to Crusader Avermax, I think we've got something on our hands here. But... Hopefully he lets me. Hopefully he lets me. Um, I want to summon something non-threatening. So. Maybe like a Hita. Alright, maybe we'll go Hita. We'll go one and. Yeah, we'll go one and two. And we'll summon Hita over here. And then we could summon the uh, Ash Blossom here. Okay, we'll activate the Heat of the Fire Charmer. Again, we're just trying to bullshit him here. Into believing that we've got something that, you know, we don't know. Unfortunately, he's got this, but... Since he's going to put... If he puts this on the bottom of our deck, the uh, Ash Blossom won't have a zone probably to summon to. So we probably won't be able to summon... Yeah, we're not able to summon the Ash Blossom. You can just detach, put everything else back. Yeah, this duel's over. This duel was actually in the running until this corny ass card came onto the field, but this is just like terrible card. Like I can't I can't do it. I have no outs. This is just it's just until that card jumped jumped onto the board and then we had to like do everything to go into an Avermax, we we, we that that card ruined it for the entire game. Alright, we just lost a coin flip. Mm, not the worst in the world. They've got D Dimension Fissure. We play the same thing. I don't really care. Uh, Dimension Fissure, I'm, I'm cool with. You know, like I said, we literally we play it. I would get another copy if I could. And they're going to chain a Runic card. You definitely don't like to see Runics, but sometimes you have to live with it. All right, they're going to summon out the Slepnir, which is one of the newer Runic cards. During your target one phase of Monster Pro Controls, banish that until the end phase. All right, whatever. It's not a bad card, honestly. Good for a sealed format, too. Because you can summon it off of any of these dudes. Uh, let's see. They can't max C, so I don't have to stress about that. If a card is added, especially someone runic token. Okay, cool, whatever. Yeah, I don't have to stress about max C. Then you got a Kashtira card. There's a lot going on on our opponent's board here. 
There's a lot going on. You know what's kind of crazy? I don't think we pulled many runic cards. During either player's turns, push someone cash to your monster just banished during your hand. I have this card, but unfortunately, I haven't really been able to use it because I only have one cash deer, so I haven't had a reason to really play this yet. All right, so since I know they don't have Effect Veil or Maxi, all that stuff is, is off right now because of Dimension Fissure, I can summon Tin Goldfish without any stress. So I'm going to summon that. I'm going to activate the effect. And uh, we've got... Summon out the Zora. And then we can special summon out the Inari Fire. And we have Solemn Judgment plus Ferret Flames is a pretty sick combo. I think we go into Time Thief, right? Because our attacks aren't really, can't get over anything on the field here. So we'll go Time Thief with Tin Goldfish and Inari Fire. We'll leave this dude on the field. As this dude can buff himself using the Iowas. So he can actually get strong. Alright, so we're going to activate Zora. And we're going to target itself, and we're going to attach... Actually, we can attach Artemis, that way we can search next turn. Uh, so we'll... Oof. Cancel. Can't cancel that. Alright, never mind. I can't cancel that. Uh, no applicable effect. We'll activate to search Artemis. Search with Artemis, I should say. And we're going to search this for a follow-up next turn. I think we'll just go to battle phase now, and our opponent has the effect to... Uh, banish one of our monsters until the end phase see which one it is but they do have the effect to do so <laughs> yep they're gonna quick effect activate banish time thief i if i banish this what does it really accomplish if i use my effect it doesn't really accomplish much so i'm probably just gonna let this get banished and that get banished um and now we just go to main phase two and then we just set judgment and ferret flames and what is cool is that we do have judgment plus ferret flames so that is a pretty decent combo we'll end phase our opponent seems to be playing a variety of cards which is nice so their monsters are our monsters are both going to come back right our time thief plus our plus his slepnir will come back yeah we are playing a variety he's playing a variety of cards so i think time thief redeemer might be pretty decent in this matchup i do want to use solemn judgment as soon as possible so if he makes some kind of big play runic tip i will probably activate the runic on the i'll, I'll activate it on the on the fountain I'll, I'll negate the fountain i'll leave the i'll let the tip resolve but i do actually want to pay life points as soon as possible here so he's gonna add fountain for a second there i believe that this was like a masochist but obviously i don't believe that this is a masochist now i think he's just playing kind of some weird cards all right so standby phase we'll activate time thief hopefully we can get a spell or a trap card would be nice all right he's gonna chain target one face up monster uh, destroy by uh, target one face a monster next time it would be destroyed by card effect it is not uh, that's fine I'm, I'm cool with that he's trying to fill up his graveyard obviously with runic cards uh, he's trying to get us the deck out here we're gonna we're gonna spell that's pretty nice we are gonna negate the solemn judge with the solemn judgment we're gonna negate we got a moon mirror shell at the top of his deck which is kind of cool again I wish I could keep it but I can't moon mirror shield would be one of the best cards we could possibly pull if I pull three of those, it'd be all right. So that's what I'm going to judgment, without a doubt. <coughs> and uh, fortunately, judgment also enables Furt Flames, so we can activate Furt Flames in response to one of his cards, and then we can, uh, yeah, we can activate judgment in response. Uh, Furt Flames, if he does any of these effects, we can activate that, and then we can force him to shuffle things away. Uh, it just depends on what his last card is, but I think we're in, in quite good shape here. He's going to activate that. During the main phase, he's going to use our effect. So we, we're going to do two things. We're going to activate Time Thief Redoer first uh, to uh, draw. Actually, never mind. I guess we're just going to do that. We're going to do just Time Thief Redoer. We're going to draw a card. And we're gonna, he's going to banish both. He's going to go straight to end phase. Okay, that's fine. And now we have Time Thief Redoer back. Uh, this, what, what are the tokens? we got a Fairy token and a Beast, so... That. I actually haven't seen this card in a while. Um, if a card is added, he can special summon a token. Do we care if he summons a token here? 
I mean, we can just negate this, but he can actually just dodge it anyway, so I don't really care. And I do want to destroy this card eventually, so... <coughs> I'm going to just let him summon the token. Screw that token. He also forgot to enter the battle phase, so his tokens aren't even attacking or doing anything as of right now. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, we can actually Furt Flames right now. And I don't know what that will really accomplish, but so I'll just leave it. Yeah, I don't know what Furt Flame really accomplishes. We'll go Time Thief for sure. And we'll get a spell card, another Moon Mirror. How often does that happen to us? Uh, so now we'll go and uh, we can... Actually, we'll search out with the effect of Artemis. So we'll start with that. And we'll search out an Endymion. And then we'll activate the effect of Zora. Attach to itself, make him a bunch of attack, and we'll attach Iwas. So now he's at 25, we'll activate Zora, and we'll special summon one of the Endymions out, and then we'll normal summon the other Endymion out. Uh, his effects are, this Endymion's effects are negated, so now we activate this, since we don't have anything left anyway, so we'll just go pop the Artemis, draw a card. Oh, that's not usable because my opponent's never going to enter the battle phase anyway. Yeah, they're literally never going to enter the battle phase, so it's like completely irrelevant. I think we just need to enter the battle phase with what we've got here. Yeah, I, my opponent, the chances of my opponent attacking are slim, so we can go... There can only be one or memories, or... All of these cards have different utility here. I think Forbidden Chalice is the most like good card. Bistial, I might Tribute Summon. This is good against maybe the tokens, so I'll just get rid of the the memories. Plus, he's good. He, he doesn't even have a battle phase for a while. Uh, we can activate this effect. What monster went to... Oh, right, because I destroyed that. Uh, so we'll activate the effect of Bistial Magnum. Cool. I totally forgot that because I destroyed it when it was a spawn trap card. So it actually didn't go, didn't get banished, which is cool. So we'll be able to summon that, and then we'll be able to search with that too, which is quite nice. So I think we just do an a full out attack here so we'll do that activation and we can make our opponent shuffle away one thing at least so we'll just go to battle phase they obviously have their effect to activate if they want to slepnir is not a problem at all i i don't mind my opponent activating slepnir whatsoever here because it actually uh they can banish that uh i think we can chain a variety of things we're going to activate time thief redoer number one we're going to chain Furt Flames, number two. And number three, I think we do actually activate Forbidden Chalice to negate that. Uh, because why not? I want to negate that and uh, this way I can destroy this card and don't have to deal with it anymore. <coughs> so we'll negate his monster effects. Um, now they're forced to shuffle something back until their attack points. You know, they're going to shuffle at least one back here. So I'm going to sh shuffle that back. And then we're going to detach this to draw. And uh, slap near is negated all the way over here. So that's good. So now we're in the battle phase. We just attack over all of these tokens. He takes some damage. We attack this token, this token, um, this token directly. And we're almost at game here. We just main phase, set... And I don't think there's much that we can really summon that would matter here. Yeah, I don't think there's much. Yeah, there's not much here. Um, I think we just, just pass on this and hopefully we'll see what our opponent is able to accomplish. We'll end phase Magnema to search for Iron Dragon because most of the columns are filled. So even if he does draw a monster, that's good. I think we're in, in great shape here. All right, standby. Fa oh, and we won. That's it. I was going to go Time Thief, but never mind. We won. Uh, solid win. All right, we've got two legacy tickets. All right, this is what our opponent was playing. They were playing Kashtira with Runic. Kashtira, Runic, a uh, bunch of Kashtira cards. And well, like, he didn't draw any Kashtira cards. If he had drawn Kashtira cards, we probably would have been in trouble. But he didn't draw anybody. He has them, right? He's got Unicorn and, and Fenrir and Ogre. We need more Ogres personally. Probably Scareclaw we could use too. But yeah, unfortunately for him, he didn't draw them. All right, so let's see what we've got in this Master Pack. Oh, you are. Beautiful. That was a complicated game. A lot of thought went into that. So, why not? 
Wow, okay. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Left arm of the exo- We have two left arms, okay. Uh, scare- Scrap lube, okay, that's not happening. Target with Scrap Monster Graver, special summon it. Its effects are negated, not, not terrible. Uh, Paladin of Dark Dragon for Red Eyes, don't think I have the Ritual Spell. Panda is a pretty decent card, uh, but... I mean, you can special summon this card from your hand. We don't have enough of this to really have synergy. Uh, another copy of that, Destiny Hero Denier is a good card, and we do have uh, Destiny Fusion, or well, that's what it's called, right? Des whatever the Destiny Hero Fusion card is, we have it, and uh, we just don't have any of the extra deck monsters worth making, but we do have it, so this is a really good card to uh, pull, to, to kind of have with that. Um, and then we've got for the super rare, Raphael, Lord of the Phantasms. That is not a usable card for us. It attributes three fiend monsters. Can't really do anything with that. And we don't have any of the other support. We don't have Dark, dark Beckoning Beast, etc., etc., etc. We don't have what's needed for that. And then for the UR, we've got Triple Tact. Oh my god. Oh my god. What a day. What a day. Triple Tactics Talents. They're going to stop max seeing us as soon as we pulled this. Oh my god. I can't believe we just pulled that. That is amazing. This is like a meta deck now. This is like a meta deck. It's incredible. Um, wow. I don't know what to replace, but I actually I kind of do know what I want to replace. All right. That is incredible. More going second cards. That is really, really, really good. All right. Let's open up these uh, legacy tickets. Let's see. Again, it's not, it's not going to top that. We're going to skip, go right here. <coughs> uh, this is a card we already have, right? Do we already have this? Yeah, uh, yeah, we do have this card. Uh, this is a UR. We now have two copies. Uh, you can read this. I've already read this. This card is almost physically impossible to summon. I don't think it's even like... It's so outrageously difficult to summon. I don't think we're going to be able to do it. Our deck does not generate enough advantage to have 10 cards that are just laying around not doing anything. Uh, but this is a decent card once it hits the field. Uh, what upon is a promo from the movie pack, I believe the the first Yu-Gi-Oh movie that I went to back in like 2000. I want to say 2005. You went to the movie, they gave you a little gold pack, and this was one of the cards you could get. Uh, if this card's added to your hand from your deck to your hand by card effect, you could special summon it. This has one of the many effects of Poplar. Pretty good. Uh, and it's level one too. Uh, this is the uh, ritual for the uh, I forget the card, but it's the guy with the sword face thing uh garma sword and then Akio beam <laughs> octo Akio beam is an awesome looking car i thought this my entire life i was like this car looks phenomenal i have no idea how this is a fairy this is this for in my head this looks like a fiend this is like absolutely this is what i think fiend this thing sneaking up on me at night this is like a fiend right here and they're like nah never mind it's fairy and it's a light too there's nothing about this that is like that looks like a fairy or a light this looks like an absolute disgusting creature you'd see in hell all right so let's edit the deck obviously triple tax what's crazy well we pulled two cards from the bundles without actually buying the bundles i think i'm gonna go ahead and mm, do we do we give give the graveyard of a super giant organism another chance maybe i, I I'll, I'll take it out for now i think i i triple tactics is like like how do i not play triple tactics down it's like come on uh, like, yeah, it's it's like in most decks, in a meta deck, you'd be like, eh, I don't know, I don't want to brick. But like here, I think we play this. I think we play this, especially since we've been getting hand trapped recently, significantly. And we have a lot of cards that can actually get us hand trapped, which is kind of a positive thing now that we have this, right? This can get hand trapped. This can get hand trapped. This can get hand trapped. Um, everything can get max seed. Uh, we have, and then for going second, we just straight up monster effects. So those are playable. This is a really, really, really stunning, phenomenal pull. All right, we just won the coin flip. Pretty solid here. Pretty solid hand. We've got Kashira Ogre, some other stuff. So we're going to go ahead and Kashira Ogre out first. Obviously, got to summon that if they maxi. That's cool. Normal summon out Endymion. Uh, we could actually pop Purple Poison, not this turn, but next. So we're going to target the Magistus. And attach. Might as well equip Artemis now since we're probably just gonna synchro or link this away anyway, or not link this away. We'll add Zora just because he's actually no, I don't want to add Zora. I want to add Endymion because then the next turn I could pop purple poison possibly. And then we'll activate this to destroy. 
put something back and draw a card. Pretty cool. Uh, Chao Sai doesn't really do much in this hand at all, so we'll just probably end without him. He's not really helping. Purple Poison can be a nice follow-up with the Endymion, so I'll just put that back. And I'll just set Fur at Flames. And that's it. Yeah, I think that that is enough. That's all we could do, unfortunately. Alright, our opponent's going to activate the Labyrinth Field spell. Truth be told, this duel's probably over. Uh, Labyrinth is, like, it's the most unwinnable matchup. And we're in gold, so we really don't have to be here. Uh, that's pretty good, though. At least we got Bistial Magnema, and we can chain to, uh, during your opponent's turn, banish this card from the graveyard. Uh, yeah, there's no point to really do this. I mean, I guess we could... I guess we can use uh, Tiamaton. Now, is Bistio Magnema going to come up next turn? Or later in the duel? I mean, it might. They don't really special summon from Graveyard a lot, but like it might actually come up later. <coughs> but this way I can pop a column. So I think I'm going to do this now. So I'm going to banish to special summon. And I'm going to be able to pop one of these two columns, which is kind of nice. So we'll banish that, we'll special summon out Tiamaton, or this dude, and then we're going to search Tiamaton during the end phase. And we'll activate it, end phase, we'll search Tiamaton, we'll summon him instantly to pop one of these two columns. Say so probably the one closest right here will pop. So we'll summon this right here, hopefully it's useful. And we'll pop one of the spawn trap cards before you can activate them. And we hit a mirror force. Okay, that's not... It's not bad, right? Hitting a mirror force. Fiendish Chain's pretty good against Labyrinth. This guy's a little a little, a little off mentally, so... I'm kind of happy about that, because it might be uh, better for us. I think I'm going to activate the Endymion right now. Target a Magistus, equip. And they're going to activate... Breakthrough skill, okay. I will take it, I, I guess. I mean, I'll take the breakthrough skill. Uh, breakthrough skill is attached, or it doesn't attach, it just negates, but that's fine, whatever. And then he's gonna summon a fiend from his hand or graveyard, so I don't know what fiend this is, but he's gonna be able to summon it. It's the clock, okay. Good thing I didn't scoop. Okay, so we're gonna summon out Endymion. We're gonna activate the Pendulum Scale. We're gonna activate this Endymion, the one that can't be the one that isn't negated. Uh, we're gonna pop the purple poison, and then we're going to put back probably Dimension Prison. We put back and we keep Fiendish Chain. And then we are going to purple poison to pop the field spell. So now he's down to three cards, that's pretty good. Uh, one of these cards doesn't really do anything for us, so we're just gonna make a time thief. Just in case they've got another Mirror Force, so we'll go Endymion plus Endymion. We'll actually summon it right here. Because this way we actually lock out the extra monster zone, so they can't make Link Monsters. So if they did want to make Link Monsters, they couldn't make Link Monsters. And I think, now we just go to Battle Phase, I, I think that's what's best here. We'll see what they do, but I, I, mean, I guess we just go to Battle Phase, so we'll declare an attack. Activate this effect. I, I I don't know why I declared with this one on this, but that was, that was a dumb declaration. I know that in Blazing the Air Force. So at least they get to use my effect, which is kind of cool. We're going to activate Time Thief immediately to banish itself. So it, it didn't matter that I declared on this, but I really should declare it on this card instead. So we're going to detach. <coughs> and then we're going to Blazing the Air Force destroy all that stuff. And now Ogre will resolve. We'll look five cards deep and we'll banish. Uh, let's see. Okay, so he's going to draw this. It's a brick. That's fine. Um, this is going to be on the top of his deck, which is good for Time Thief. Uh, this is the next card we're going to get off the top of his deck for Time Thief. That's fine. And then Ice Dragon's Prison is actually dangerous. And Raigeki. I think we banish the Ice Dragon's Prison. 
Yeah, we banish Ice Dragon's prison. So now we set that up and we go to main phase two. We'll set the Fiendish Chain and we'll just pass on this. Although I think he can reset everything with the... Uh, actually, he can't because it's not in the graveyard. He should have let me destroy this monster. So we'll reset. They're going to draw a brick that's usually a brick, but they can actually tribute summon. So it's not really a brick, but we've got Fiendish Chain to prevent any foolishness. So he, they, they can actually put this to good use, but we're not going to allow them to. They're going to break through skill, negate our monster effect. That actually really does suck. Yeah, that really does suck, actually. That breakthrough skill is not good. Forgot about breakthrough skill. So now they can tribute someone, which would be actually smart. Yeah, this duel just got really uh, annoying. Yep, they're going to Tribute Summon just as expected, and they're going to Summon Lovely. Ugh, this sucks that they can look at the top and then place them on the deck in any order, because now they can reset their, their the top of their deck, which is a little annoying. Next turn, though, Time Thief is back to, uh, back to business. He's a usable card again. Yep, he's going to rearrange, that's fine. Like I said, I have Fiendish Chain to deal with the lovely Labyrinth, so I'm not too stressed. He's going to target uh, the Silver Castle. I'm going to chain Fiendish Chain. This card is like super dangerous for us, like in so many different ways. It can reset trap cards. It can uh, make it so I can't respond to trap activations. Like this, uh, it can destroy things. This card's really, really annoying. He's going to go to Battle Phase, he can't attack. He's wasting everybody's time. Um, yeah, and now he's going to go to End Phase. Now, we might get a trap off the top of his deck with Redoer now. And Ari Fire is okay. If we get a trap, that's really good. So we'll activate now. I think he's done with the breakthrough skills. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to get a spell card. I might as well activate this effect. Since it is a spell, it's not like I have anything else to do. So we're going to detach to draw. And we get a Solemn Judgment. I can't really get over his monster yet. Which sucks, but... I actually think we set Inari Fire, right? Alright, Inari Fire basically special summons itself back. Destroyed by a card effect. Actually, I think we just leave... Yeah, we. I think we just set Inari Fire. Face down. I think we set Judgment. And we just leave Time Thief. And we just pass on this. Thanks, that should be pretty good. We are going to activate Time Thief Redoer. If we get a trap card, that's pretty nice. If we get a trap card, um, we can actually put this on the top of his deck perfect. I don't have to rush this because I've got Fiendish Chain anyway. And we want him to draw this lovely Labyrinth. Again, this is pointless that he's activating this because he can't resolve it. So uh, his monster is still negated. I'm actually, I want to do it in a way where he draws it for Raigeki. And that's the one that I, uh, I'm going to judgment that 100%. I'm going to judgment that 100%. Uh, that's the one that I left, but then he reset his deck, and I left it. Like, there's a lot a lot that happened in between there. I could have banished that, but I felt like the Ice Dragon's Prison was a little more dangerous. As we play a lot of, obviously, Spellcasters and stuff. So he's going to end his turn. He can't attack, whatever. Uh, we're going to grab... We're not going to bounce this on top of his deck yet, because I want him to draw it for turn. Actually, I could make him shuffle into the deck. And then, do I win then? Uh, yeah, why not? Let's do it. We'll shuffle this back into his deck, and I believe we win now. We don't actually win. We have 15, 24. We're close. If we draw any monster, we win the duel. And we win the duel. Perfect. Uh, we'll activate Time Thief. Why not? He does have the, the Blackjack or whatever. Uh, we've got two traps underneath. That's pretty good. So we'll flip summon. Uh, we'll normal summon out Dragoodies. And we should win the duel here. We should win the duel. But he's got the Blackjack. So I have to watch out for that. Alright, let's go to Battle Phase. We'll attack directly. He's going to activate Blackjack. And he's going to set that when a monster declares an attack. Target one fiend. Monster on the field negate its effects if you do destroy it. Can he activate this the same turn it's set? Actually, you know what? I'll attack with Dragoodies that way. Oh, never mind. I guess he can anyway. Yeah, we won anyway. Both of these cards actually float. So even if they were destroyed, I wouldn't really care. That's actually a perfect situation. We finally beat Labyrinth. 
It was a little boneheaded labyrinth, but you know what? It's still labyrinth. It's still a deck that has an incredible like advantage engine. We got three legacy tickets. Pretty good. All right, this is what our opponent was playing. It, like I said, it was a little bit of a boneheaded labyrinth deck, but it's still labyrinth. Like it still goes if played correctly, it still goes plus plus five every single turn, even during your turn. On top of that, again, fourteen card extra deck. I still cannot explain it. No one. I, I remember there used to be an FTK where you needed to play a fourteen card extra deck, and then you didn't get FTK'd. But that FTK has been gone for a very very long time it, it was relevant i think in like the first six months of the game coming out and it's been what two years two and a half years since this game's come out so i have no idea why people are still playing a 14 card extra deck all right let's open up a master pack let's see what we get here it's a glow pretty good we've been we've been getting great stuff the entire episode honestly it's been just good cards all around we've got galloping guy with a field spot for gaia battle fader it's not a bad card I, Maybe a little too late in the series. Plague Spreader, another phenomenal card. Uh, we can probably use this in the... Uh, we could probably use this in the... Chaos deck. It's like, actually two really good cards. Two back-to-back -back good cards. Second Donkey. I don't think this is usable. When this card is normal, send one perform palmas from deck to graveyard. Uh, you can add it to hand. It's not, not like terrible. A uh, Fire Formation card. Can't really use that. Black Fang, another new card for our Pendulum Pile deck, which is really good. Uh, we've got Crystal Boon, uh, which is a Crystal Beast card that I'd say is kind of like okay. And then we've got Time 3 Thief Retrograde. When a spell or trap card is activated, while you control a Time Thief XYZ monster, negate the activation. If you do attach that card to a Time Thief XYZ monster, you control as material. Wow, that is really good. We basically make Time Thief every single time. So that is... It's basically a spawn trap card negate that attack. That's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. We, we we also have a counter trap. Wow, that's and that's a counter to... The problem is when we have those, those turns where we just kind of end on a barrier statue, I can imagine this card being kind of dead. But most of the time, we make a Time Thief. One, two, three, four fantastic cards. All episode long, we've been pulling amazing stuff. I can't even really, really complain. All right, let's open up these legacy tickets. See what we've got in here. We've got three legacy tickets. Let's uh, let's see what, what these amount to. Camera clops. Okay, this card's actually not bad for a sealed environment. Uh, Sis hunter. I mean, if we had more of those, maybe we could play them. Furious sea king. Uh, just kind of a bad stat-wise card. Mystic lamb or mystic sheep. Another kind of bad card. Uh, this this probably has some kind of remote random uses. Uh, your opponent conducts their battle phase twice. I don't... This is another one of those cards. Like, I can't imagine why this would ever be good. But okay, you can give your opponent two battle phases. Alright, so here's our Pendulum Pile deck. It continues to improve. I actually have to take a lot of stuff out, too. Because I haven't really... I have to really, like, look at the Pendulum Pile and really... Black Fang goes in there. I mean, we have some good stuff right here. We, we definitely do. We have all of these... Our scales are a little weird, so it might be a little tough to play. I haven't updated this deck in forever. I've just kind of like been throwing things in. We've got some Nelmeria cards, which is cool. We've also got some Sofa Cord cards, uh, in addition to the Sofa Cord X uh, Link Three monster, which is quite good. Uh, we have decent stuff like Bambuku. We have uh, Lady Lady Ange. Uh, we have Black Fang, Purple Poison. We have uh, another sofa cord like we're definitely missing stuff we have mythical beast jackal king we definitely have stuff but we're also missing a ton uh oath magician like like yeah it's decent but like compared to like a regular pendulum deck it's just not really gonna work our best bet is to maybe summon like a barrier statue and and, and you know it's like and then what like if i feel like our existing deck might actually just be better all right so here's our regular deck i do want to try to play this um like I said, this is good. Plague Spreader's good. Bat Battle Fader's good. Also, the Retrograde is really good, too. Like I, I, we, Most of the time, we end on Time Thief. Most of the time. And I want a way to work this in. Like, there's... Like, the deck is basically a Time Thief Turbo deck, unless we draw Barrier Statue, in which case, we play that. So, I might play that. I'm going to just leave it in there. I'm going to save it. I'm going to take something out. You guys can tell me what I should take out. I don't even know what to take out. Like, back to the front... Cran horn, like I don't even know what to take out because our deck's just been getting better and better, and I haven't been really taking stuff out. And that's definitely something that uh, 
It's interesting. I don't, I don't really know what to take out because Time Thief is amazing. And uh, we almost always summon him. And now because just because we have him, we have a spawn trap card in Gate that's really, really good. Okay, lastly, this is an, another deck that we've got Plague Spreader Zombie. Uh, this is our Chaos deck. I'm really looking forward to playing this deck. I might practice with it in the solo mode. This is another deck I, I have to really look at. But this is probably, if anyone has a deck list for this deck, I will play it. Obviously, we... Uh, I do want to play this. Like, it's like we, we keep pulling... We pulled a lot of going second cards. On top of going second cards, uh, we pulled... I'd say just good chaos cards since the beginning we've been pulling so many amazing chaos cards I think we can actually get away with playing this I do have to update it and maybe take some things out put some things in test it in the solo mode but I actually like this deck a lot uh, for for what it could possibly be so I'm going to save that and maybe this is the deck that we play next episode la 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 la